Let's take a quick look at Worksheet 14-1. Now, I do have a key posted, so this is just a video in case you're a little bit stuck on some things you don't understand what I mean in the key. Okay, I'm not going to actually write all these answers down. They are on the key, but number one, the what is meant by input work, and these are all about input work, output work, ideal and actual mechanical advantage. Okay, When you use a machine, it complicates things a little bit because there's more than just uh, you uh, and the object. There's this intermediate step in between, and it doesn't matter if it's a lever or a ramp or a pulley or what, but there's always something else. Okay, So usually we use, we're using a ramp because there's something that we need to get to a higher spot, Okay, and we can't just pick it straight up. So we use a ramp to make that easier, because if we use a ramp, we don't have to push as hard. Okay, So we push this way, and the ramp pushes this way. Okay, So this is what the machine does. This is what you do. Okay, and anytime it's you who does something, then it's input work. So input work is the the work that you do on a machine, or the work that you you exert. That's the effort you push times the distance over which you push. So on a ramp, the distance that you push over is the length of the ramp, and the force you push with is this thing, right? However hard it takes to push up the ramp. Output work is what the machine does. The machine is lifting this object up to here. Since that's what the machine's doing, it's called output work, and it would be the height of the ramp times the weight of the object since it's lifting its weight. Mechanical advantage is actually telling us how these are related. Mechanical advantage tells us how many times the force is multiplied by a machine. So for instance, if this machine has a mechanical advantage of four, what that means is if I push with eight newtons, the machine takes that times 4 and we get out 32 newtons. Okay, So mechanical advantage is how many times force is multiplied by a machine. Of course, a machine has friction and that's what number 4 is about. Actual mechanical advantage includes friction. It's what you actually get from the machine. Ideal mechanical advantage is calculated with distances and it excludes friction. It's what the machine would do if there was no friction and it was a perfect machine. There's no such thing, okay? But you can get pretty close sometimes. The ideal mechanical advantage of an inclined plane, well, since it's ideal, the best it could possibly be, since the job is to lift something this high, but you're actually pushing something this far, the ratio of the distances lets you figure that out. And so it's distance input or input distance divided by output distance. Okay? If you see me write this, distance in over distance out, I'm talking about input distance and output distance. Okay? Actual mechanical advantage is always going to be less than ideal mechanical advantage. And the reason for that is you push this way and friction pushes this way. Okay? And actual mechanical advantage includes that. So you have to include friction with actual mechanical advantage, not with ideal. Can a machine reduce the amount of work done? Absolutely not. No. Okay. And my key says think about it in terms of energy. But the other thing you can think about is force and distance, right? We saw in our lab that work is equal to force times distance. But if we made the ramp longer, we made the distance bigger, the force went down, okay? Um, but it didn't go very as, as far down, okay? So a machine can't reduce the amount of work done because if force decreases, then distance increases. Um, it also can't reduce the amount of work done because the law of conservation of energy says so, right? Work is the transfer of energy. You can't get more energy out of something than you put into something, okay? Eight. How does an inclined plane make work easier? Well, it allows you to exert a smaller force over a greater distance. Instead of just pushing straight up with a big force, you get to push this way with a much, much smaller force. So a smaller force over a longer distance. Suppose a ramp is made longer. How will this affect its ideal mechanical advantage? Well, remember, ideal mechanical advantage is input distance divided by output distance. If we make the input distance bigger, ideal mechanical advantage goes up. Okay, but actual mechanical advantage, would this affect it? Well, not looking at the equation, but if you think about it, okay, you guys already did this in lab. If I push this way and I make my ramp longer and longer and longer and longer, I have to push against friction the entire distance. Okay, so actually actual mechanical advantage is going to go down the longer your ramp gets because there's going to be a longer distance over which you have to exert a force and that means friction acts against you the whole time.
Okay, the this problem is pretty straightforward. Okay, uh, it's just a whole bunch of math. You've got to know all your equations, but you've also got to be able to find input and output quantities. Remember, input is what you do, output is what the machine does. I always like to draw in my object so I can keep track of it. it says this is a 24 newton object, so it weighs 24 newtons and it takes 8 newtons of force to push it up the incline. Okay, if you get stuck on this, check the key, but should be pretty straightforward there's not a whole lot of difficult math here it's just a whole lot of terminology you need to start getting familiar with